Max program. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Company with Jim Jordan as Fibber, Donald Novis, The Four Notes, Billy Mills Orchestra, and our special guest for tonight, Zazu Pitts. The show opens with Drums in My Heart. Here's a real time saver for you busy housewives who have a struggle trying to keep your floors and linoleum clean. Do as millions of the best housekeepers do. Use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You can have beautiful, shining floors without any work of rubbing or buffing. You simply pour a little glow coat right out of the can onto the clean floor. Spread it around evenly with a soft cloth or the long-handled glow coat applier. Why, it's so easy a child can do it. Give glow coat 20 minutes to dry and then take a look. See the lovely, gleaming polish. A polish that protects your floors from dirt and wear. Keeps them looking like new with practically no work. Order a can of Glow Coat tomorrow and see for yourself. Glow Coat is spelled G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. There's no finer polish of its kind. Fibber is vastly annoyed. It seems that one of the window shades in his front room, like a good man, can't be kept down. It's always flying up on its roller. So as our curtain rises tonight... That rat, that rat thing anyway. Hear it go up, folks? <laughs> as our curtain rises on the living room at 79 Wistful Vista, we find Fibber, it takes a heap of fiction to make a house a home, McGee. <laughs> Why does everything have to happen to me anyway? Now it's this dad ratted shit. Oh, for the... There it goes again. I wonder who I could get to fix this thing. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll have a decorator come out here on some pretext. <laughs> He'll think I'm in the market for a lot of stuff, and then I'll ask him kind of casually to fix this shade for me. That'll do it. Hello, operator. Jimmy. Oh, is that you, Mert? Still working for the phone company, eh, Mert? <laughs> How's everything, Mert? Oh, it is, huh? What's your old man doing now? Oh, same thing, huh? Ninety days. Oh, well, he ain't so dumb. He'll miss all this winter weather, and he'll be sprung in the spring. Oh, and speaking of springs, connect me with some good interior decorating outfit, will you, Mert? Yeah. Oh, Miss Clay. Hello, decorating company? It's Trevor McGee, 79 Wistful Vista. Yeah. Listen, send me out an expert who knows something about carpets and furniture and draperies and rugs and all stuff like that there. Oh, yeah, and window shades. Yeah. Okay, bud. Thanks. Now, let's see. Oh, shucks. Come in. Hello there, Johnny. Got a punch board here. Can't take a chance on an electric razor. Two bits of punch. <laughs> No, thanks, old-timer. I don't believe so. Really? I says, no, thanks. I can't use an electric razor. I got so much personal magnetism, I short-circuit him. <laughs> That's pretty good, Johnny. But that ain't the way I hit it. <laughs> the way I hit it. Hey, what was that, Johnny? <laughs> Just the window shade. I can't keep it down. Oh, well, the way I hit it. <laughs> one fella says to the other fella, see, see, see where all the big nations are building up their air forces. Looks like the next war would be the third one to be fought in the air. That's so, interrogated other fella. Who fit the other two? Well, vouchsafe the first fella. Wixel and Bernie for one, and Benny and Alan for the other. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the aviator who practiced flying through tunnels, Johnny. He wanted to be an ace in the hole. <laughs> I like this young fella. Wonder why I only meet him on Tuesday night. <laughs> that old 
Dodo. I'll bet he thinks our anti-aircraft division wears skirts. Now, i got to get the shade there. Oh, now, what? Come in. Oh, hi, Uppy. Gee, you look like the original Merry Widow. What are you looking so happy about? Oh, Miss McGee, I just had to come in and tell you. Oh, really, Miss McGee, I am simply walking on air. <laughs> <laughs> you? <laughs> you walking on air, Uppy? <laughs> That's an awful kick in the teeth of the law of gravity. <laughs> Uh, Miss McGee, I wonder, huh? would you think I was just a silly girl if I told you that I'm... <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> well, I wonder if I told you that I was in love. <gasps> oh, really, I'm simply fluttering, really. At last, I have met my dream man. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Your dream man, eh? Well, who is the lucky guy, Mrs. Uppington? Do I know him? Oh, I don't think so, Miss McGee, but he is simply divine. <gasps> so romantic, so handsome. And, oh, his manners are so continental. Uh-huh. And do you know, he writes poetry to me. Poetry? Yes, yes he does, really. <laughs> and I am such a happy girl. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, listen, Uppy, quit palpitating a minute and give me the lowdown. Who is he? Oh, you must meet him, Miss McGee. Horatio is such a dear, really. Horatio? Yes, Horatio K. Boomer. <laughs> Such a lovely name, don't you think so? Hey, listen, Uppy, that guy. I ch- don't know why all you men don't cultivate such charming manners, Miss McGee. Huh? Why, do you know, last night he kissed my hand so fervently, my diamond ring came off. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. I think that was the sweetest thing. <laughs> really, I do. Oh, but now, I really, I must be going now, Miss McGee. Horatio is coming for tea. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. McGee. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Kissed her hand so hard her diamond ring come off. <laughs> Wadley hugs her so hard her necklace falls in his pocket. <laughs> I wonder if I ought to warn her about that guy. So... Hey, Pepper. Oh, hi, Billy. Hi, Don. What's the matter? Well, you know that big wrestler that lives across the street? Oh, you mean Gus the Grunt? Yeah, what about him? <laughs> he says you've been flirting with his wife. Why, Don, I never done no such a thing. How'd he ever get that idea? He says you keep trying to signal her with your window shade, raising it and lowering it all day long. Oh. <laughs> oh. Why, listen, fellas, that shade is on the bum. I can't help it if it won't stay down. There. You see? I never touched it. Well, we understand it, but that wrestler doesn't. Look, he's over there on his front porch now, shaking his fist this way. Oh, oh look. Oh, he's coming over here. Well, hurry up and sing, Don. Maybe that'll calm him down. I doubt it, Fibber. He's a tough cookie. Oh, oh, boy, boy, boy. What are you doing? I'm looking ahead a couple of pages to see what he does to me. <laughs> you go ahead and sing, Don. Have you forgotten? Go right ahead. <laughs> To think that once you cared for me at all I can't believe that you'd refuse to speak to me Each time I call Have you forgotten so soon That lovely night in June Our graduation dance The glorious beginning of Diversions we planned in advance Have you forgotten so soon? Have you forgotten so soon? The sun upon the sand The moon of yellow gold The things at Coney Island That the fortune teller told Air-conditioned movies That gave us the cold Have you forgotten so soon? Don't you still remember the witch's party on Halloween? And that gay December, the whitest Christmas we've ever seen. Have you forgotten so soon that loving cup we made of old Italian wine? That New Year's Eve at Tony when the gang sang all lang syne All those nights in heaven That used to be mine Have you forgotten So
great, Don. That was one of the most beautiful. Oh, oh, there's that wrestler. Let's take a peek at him. <laughs> Boy, what a bruiser. Look at them muscles. <laughs> Makes Man Mountain Dean look like a foothill. <laughs> oh, well, I'll have to talk to him. <laughs> Hi, bud. Uh, I got some of your bones to pick with me. Now, now, wait a minute, bud. Control yourself. I can explain everything. You better talk faster, kid. You flirt with my wife with his window shade. What do you mean by those, huh? Oh, now, listen, chump. Or champ. <laughs> you are a champ, ain't you? Sure. I'm a champ this week. Next week, it's Louis Madisco's turn to be champ. <laughs> After that, it's my turn again. <laughs> well, that's fine. But look, Gus, I ain't been flirting with your wife or anybody else's wife, see? That window shade is busted. It keeps flying up, and I pull it down again. I'll have it fixed today, sure. Little fella, I'm going to let you go this time. But don't let me happen to you again. <laughs> oh! 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 Are you sick, bud? Don't be foolish. I'm going to have a wrestling match tonight. This is my time for the rehearsal. Oh! 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 I bet some of them wrestlers don't know whether to join an athletic club or the actor's guild. <laughs> oh, well, I got to do Well, something. hello there, Fibber. Oh, hi, Harpo. What you wearing the riding breeches for? Oh, I've got a Charlie horse. Oh, how'd you get that there? Oh, I got it scrubbing floors. I was foolish enough to demonstrate to a housewife how much labor there was in the old-fashioned way of rubbing and scrubbing floors in linoleum, as if she didn't know. <laughs> do people still do that? Well, a few. Boy, was that work. And then, by way of contrast, I showed her how Johnson's self-polishing glow coat would keep her floors and linoleum clean and sparkling with no effort at all. You know, no rubbing or buffing. Ain't, and then I... Ain't he wonderful, folks? <laughs> He's sincere about that, too. <laughs> and, and when I got through with the demonstration, she said, You mean I just have to pour a little glow coat out and spread it around? And I said, Yes, madam, that's all you have to do. You get that enthusiasm, folks? Such fire. And then, and then she started to put her hat on. And I said, where are you going, madam? And she said, why, this is the best news I've had for years about glow coat. I'm going to spread it around. Oh, that was wonderful. That was great, Harpo. You know, I admire you very much. Oh, gee. <laughs> I do, really. Oh, go on. You just say that. <laughs> I mean it, Harpo. Say, do you know how to fix a window shade that won't stay down? No, I'm sorry. I don't. Why don't you go out and buy a new one? No, sirree. Not me. I'll fix that shade myself or bust a leg trying. I'll see you later, Harpo. Okay, pal. Oh, now, where did I put that screwdriver? Oh, yeah. i got to take the shade. That... that rest of that. Come in. Oh, uh, Mr. McGee? Uh, yeah, bud. What's on your mind? Well, I, uh, I'm i from the Wistful Vista Decorating Company, Mr. McGee. Oh. I'm the chief interior decorator. Oh. Uh, you got a cold, bud? No. Why? Oh, I don't know. You you being an interior decorator, and <laughs> that bass voice kind of fooled me. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, That's very good. Very good. <laughs> Or is it? <laughs> have a cigar, bud? Uh, thanks, I have one. You got two? Thanks. Not at all. Uh, say, you have some very interesting pieces here, haven't you? Very interesting. Uh, this rug now. Why, that looks like a genuine Gahulistan. Uh, may I ask what you paid for it? Two thousand. Two thousand, eh? Yeah, but I'll never save soap wrappers again, bud. <laughs> Hey, can you tell what's wrong with this window shade, bud? That rather thing keeps flying up all the time. Is that so? Yeah. Uh, the catch doesn't work, probably. Well... Now, let me see. Uh, huh? Those things on the mantelpiece, McGee, are they uh, family uh, treasures or... Uh... Well, some are and some aren't, bud. That marble Venus with the eight-day clock in her stomach was a wedding present. <laughs> 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 Since Molly's been sick, I've been too bashful to wind it. <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> that coconut with a face painted on it is a souvenir of, uh, oh, well, just a souvenir. <laughs> yeah, a souvenir. Oh, yeah. I got quite a valuable collection of souvenirs, bud. Leather watch prop from Petoskey, Michigan, with my initials burned onto it. Glass paperweight from Niagara Falls. 
Look, it's, it's got a picture of the falls. Blew right into it. Glass blowers do that stuff. Tricky, huh? <laughs> that Cupid doll there, I won that at the county fair in Fort Wayne. That red right there it goes again. What? That shade. Here, bud, fix it for me, will you? Oh, so that's all you called me out here for. What? I thought so. I won't waste another minute here. What do you mean? I know your ilk. Good day, sir. <laughs> How'd he know I was a ilk? I'm not worth it. I told Harpo I'd get the shade fixed, and I'm going to do it. Oh, now. Come in. Oh, dear. I'm so glad there's somebody home. Come on in, Wilbur. Okay, Ma. Oh, hi, sis. This is really Zazu Pitts, folks, but we want to keep her in character. What can we do for you, sis? Now, have a chair. Just throw that fishing tackle on the floor. That's it. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I was talking to Mr. Wilcox, and he said you were having some trouble with a window shade. Uh -huh. So I thought maybe you could be interested in one of these books I'm selling to put Wilbur through school. Oh, Wilbur, you're breaking the nice man's fishing pole. I know it. All right, dear, as long as you know what you're doing. <laughs> And, Wilbur, don't mark on the wallpaper with your crayon. Why not? It doesn't show very well there, dear. Go out in the hall where the paper is lighter. Hey, listen, sis. You know what that kid just done? He busted my best fishing rod. I paid 18 bucks for that pole. Oh, did you really? And he broke it all by himself. <laughs> and my goodness, he's going to be a very strong man when he grows up. <laughs> oh, then you're going to let him grow up. <laughs> You say you're selling a book, sis? What's the name of it? It's called The Handyman's Guide to Simple Repairs or What to Do Till a Plumber Comes. <laughs> it's really two books in one. I guess that's why it costs so much more than it's worth. <laughs> uh, Wilbur, careful with that air rifle, dear. What air rifle? I ain't got any air rifle. <laughs> hey, that's my target rifle. Give me that gun, you little... You little... Give me that gun. <laughs> Wilbur, you mustn't shoot people. Anyway, not till after Mother sells the book. Listen, sis, does that book tell how to repair a window shade that's gone haywire? Oh, yes. Uh, what window is it for? The front window. Then it will probably be in the front of the book. Now, let me see. Uh, window shade. Uh, uh, Wilbur, what are you doing, dear? Carving my initials on a piano leg. <laughs> well, don't cut yourself. <laughs> Pick up the shavings after you like a good boy. Oh, oh dear. What were we talking about, mister? Window shades, sis. You find anything about them in that book? My goodness, I don't seem to. Uh, let me look again. Okay. Uh, window boxes, windmills, windshield wipers. Oh, don't you just love windshield wipers? The way they go back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I always feel like waving back at them, don't you? <laughs> Listen, sis, about the window shade. Oh, yes, the window shade. Let me look again. And, uh, uh, Wilbur, don't swing on the chandelier. You might fall. <laughs> There's matches in the kitchen, Wilbur, if you'd like to burn the house down. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Oh, there, isn't he sweet? <laughs> he's so much company for me. Yeah, he's so much company, I'd like to see him incorporated and cut up into small shares. <laughs> None preferred. What about those window shades, sis? What does the book say? Oh, dear, I don't seem to be able to find it anywhere. But I'll have the publisher send you some special material about that. Uh, what was your name, mister? Oh, uh, Fibber McGee, sis. Not really. Not the Fibber McGee that broadcasts for Johnson's wife? <laughs> that's me, sis. Oh, Wilbur, here's a radio comedian. Oh, that guy? <laughs> oh, now, shucks, folks. I... Ow! Oh, this ain't him, Ma. Hey, what's the idea of sticking that pin in me, bud? Uh, well, you see, mister, somebody told Wilbur that the leading radio comedian was made out of wood. And he's simply dying to find him. <laughs> well, thank you, mister, so much. Come on, Wilbur. <laughs> Imagine all this trouble rolled up in one little window shade. Oh, well, if I... Hey, Fibber. Oh. oh, hey, Billy, what you so excited about? Why, haven't you heard... They're taking him for a ride. Taking who for a ride? Wilbur? No, Paul Revere. Who's taking him? The four notes. Oh, hot dog. I'll call up Harpo and tell him the glow coats are coming. Oh, no, that's the red coat. <laughs> oh, well, go ahead, Billy. Paul Revere with the four notes. <laughs> In 
singing Paul Revere, one if by land and two if by NBC. <laughs> Fix that dead ratted window shade. Sometimes. Hey, what is this? I'm going to have to build me a concentration camp where I can think. <laughs> Come in. Oh, there, scatterbrain. Glad to find you at home. I'd like to ask you a question. Oh. Hi, Boomer. Say, what's this about you and Mrs. Uppington? Oh, yes. Charming girl, Mrs. Uppington. Looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Really does. Seen quite a bit of each other. Oh, yeah. So with that backless evening gown of hers, I've been seeing a bit more of her than she has of me. <laughs> now listen, Boomer. Mrs. Uppington is a very wealthy woman and a good friend of mine. I don't like the idea of a guy like. Oh yes, that's what I wanted to inquire about, Whip Sockers. <laughs> is the old war horse really in the clover, or does instinct fail me? <laughs> like this at all, Boomer. The idea of a jip artist like you writing poetry to a nice woman like her. Poetry. You may think you're getting away with something for a while, Kipling, but it won't be for long, fellow. <laughs> I should have made that wittier. <laughs> oh, is that so? Well, how would you like to see little sonnet I dashed off for the old, uh, for the charming creature? <laughs> I'd like to see any poetry you wrote. Certainly, certainly. Just to show you my affection is sincere, I'll show it to you now. Where am I put that sonnet? Sonnet, sonnet. Here's a short length of rubber tubing. <laughs> Very handy if you run out of gasoline on a quiet street at night. In fact, it's the only time a sucker gets an even break. Instruction book for small bore revolvers. Never use a revolver on small bores myself. I just leave the room. <laughs> See two extortion letters, return for insufficient postage. <laughs> and a check for short beer. <laughs> well, well, imagine that. No sonner. <laughs> must have left it in my room at the hotel. Too bad I'm locked out. <laughs> well, I must be off, my boy. I'm having tea with a dear girl. It'll probably be only tea, Dratter. So long, uh, tumbleweed. Why did Uppy have to fall for a four flusher like him? If she ain't the silliest woman. No wonder the four hundred is two thirds zeros. <laughs> Let's see now. I gotta get up and fix that. Let's see. The thing that's all the stuff here. Oh, here's what's wrong. This thing is here ain't attached to the gadget that twiddles around the hot set. <laughs> well, why didn't I see that before? Yes, sir, that does it. Now to put it back up. Better climb up on the table and chair. Up she goes. Ah, there. Well, I guess it's fixed for good now. Hey, come back here. Hey, hang on. Let go. I, I'm falling. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my stuff. I wonder if I can reach the phone from here. Ah, I got it. Oh, hello, operator. How are you, Mert? <laughs> Give me wistful this, the 9670. Oh. Oh. Wilcox speaking. Is that you, Harpo? This is Fibber. Oh, yes. Remember that window shade that I was having the trouble with? Yes. Well, remember I told you I'd fix it or break my leg doing it. Oh, you got it fixed? No, I broke my leg. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment. But now, please listen for an important announcement. For a limited time only, your dealer is featuring Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat in special giant-size cans. These giant-size cans contain one-third more than the regular cans. But during this sale, you can get them for the same price as the regular size cans. This gives you one-third more for your money. So now is the time to stock up on Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Glow Coat. The supply of the giant sizes is strictly limited. When they're gone, you won't be able to get them again. Now remember, when you buy the giant size cans of Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat or Johnson's Wax Paste or Liquid, you pay for only one pint or one pound, and you get one-third more without cost. Johnson offers this extra dividend in appreciation of your loyalty to the Johnson products. Ask your dealer tomorrow for Johnson's Giant Sizes. They're selling fast, so don't delay. Well, folks, we want to thank Miss Zazu Pitts for appearing on our show tonight. And in case you're interested, I, I didn't really bust my leg. <laughs> Just turned my ankle. <laughs> Which we thought was a kind of a cute twist, and the show was. <laughs> Good night, folks. This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat, Racine, Wisconsin, inviting you all to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Collection drums in my heart is from the production through the years. The Bill McGee and Company has been presented from Hollywood's Radio City. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm-hmm.